Welcome back to Marion Golf Club, where the United States has just defeated Great Britain and Ireland 16 and a half, 9 and a half, to win the 42nd Walker Cup match. And Ron, it was kind of a victory parade the whole afternoon. Well, it pretty much was. I mean, you know, after what happened this morning, uh, yeah, it was. It was just a matter of time. You know, all the U.S. needed was two points to keep the cup, two and a half points to win the cup again. And uh, so, yeah, it was just a matter of what the score was going to be. But, uh, you know, it is a little bit surprising, the, the margin of, of, of victory, especially after the last three Walker Cups being one-point uh, decisions. Uh, but, it, you know, it's a great win for the U.S. And, you know, these guys came out there and they played, and they played great. And so, you know, hats off to them. It, it, it was nothing what we expected. No. no. And, and I, I thought it would be closer. And, Ali, how do you explain it? Well, you don't explain it. I think Ron just explained it. You say hats off to the U.S. They were the better team. And, you know, from my standpoint, or from a GB&I standpoint, you can't actually look at the GB&I team and say, well, so-and-so should be on the team or he should have been on the team. They picked the best team, and they just weren't up to the, to the job. The, the Americans were so much better. And hats, as Ron said, hats off to them. You know, fantastic victory. And, you know, not that the clinching point was that big of a deal today, but it did come down to Peter Uline on the 17th. Right. And Ron, kind of fitting. I mean, the kid comes in here as, you know, not a captain's pick, but one of the last two picks and, you know, goes 4-0, kind of like the rest of his Cowboy teammates and, and, and gets it done here at the end. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I won't say Peter came in here with something to prove. I mean, he's, he's a talent. That's all there is to it. Uh, you know, he, had a, he did have a great summer. You know, he, I don't think anyone questioned that he shouldn't be on this team. And uh, he certainly got the job done, 4-0. And like you said, he made the clinching point. Uh, you know, good for him. I mean, it's uh, he just did a super job. And yeah, the Cowboys, the three Cowboys, they amassed 10 and a half points. Not bad. And the thing about Peter Uline is he took on GB and I's best player and Stiggy Hodgson right. and stood up to him. And Stiggy, yeah. I mean, Stiggy hung in there and Peter got the job done against the best GB and I player. So. You can't, argue, you can't knock that, can you? You know, we don't know what happens behind the scenes when they're picking the Walker Cup team, but the one thing you say about Peter Uline, he may have been playing just as good as anybody on this team coming in. Oh, I think so, yeah. I mean, you know, he, he had a, you know, a good U.S. Amber. He had, he had a good summer, I mean, you know, if you look at it. You know, the way he finished off his, uh, his, uh, the college season, you know, from probably April, May, you know, in, through the NCAA. And, I, I mean, my hat is off to Peter because here's a guy who really struggled in the fall. I think he maybe played in one tournament. Actually, they, they sent him to a, an NAIA tournament as an individual uh, just to, to try to get some confidence back in him. He won that tournament, and he hasn't looked back since then. You know what, and, I, wish? You know what I wish? I wish he hadn't been picked for the U.S. team, and we could have picked him and put him on our team. <laughs> then we might have had a chance. Yeah, I mean, right. I because mean, he was fantastic today. I yes. watched him in foursomes, and the first three holes, he held, he held two – no, actually, in the first four holes, he held three very good putts to take a three-up lead. I mean, his putting was fantastic all day. Yeah, so it was. I wish he'd been on our team. You know, it's, it's one of those stories when, it, when, a, when a guy who went to Q school wins a major. I mean, Peter couldn't even break 80 at Karsten Creek, and then right. he goes and is you know, probably the man of the match here at the Walker Cup. And this is what Peter Ulan had to say after his historic moment. Uh, just, it was a special week. Um, it was just uh, bonding with the team, uh, just being with everybody for – However many days, just everybody just got along so well. You know, we played played well as a team. We got it's just it was just a special week. That's something I'll never forget. And uh, it was just I mean, words can't describe how awesome it was. So. And Alistair, the guy Peter beat, Stiggy Hodson, uh, still the man of the match on your side, if you can pick one. Yeah, uh, you know I've said it all all week long. Bulldog spirit. I mean, if we had not ten of those, we, we might have had a chance. Um, great kid. And I think you know. He, he was on kind of borderline about whether he was going to go to tour school or not. And this has proved to him this week that he can play at this level and he is going to tour school next week. So, and he's, and of all the, of all the players here, he's probably, probably the hungriest. He wants it really, really badly. Yeah, he's a fantastic little kid and, and went up against a better player today. So, you know, and what I, can you I say? Think, I think uh, the American fans really got behind him oh, from what yeah. I've watched too. I mean, you know, he, he's a likable young you man. He was signing uh, autographs. Yeah, Actually, mean, he was signing autographs for kids who were taller than him. Bro, <laughs> yeah, well, that's not difficult. No, exactly. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, Ron, he's kind of GB and I's Brian Harmon, if, right. if you're an American. Yeah. And this is what Stiggy had to say. There's a lot I've learned from this week. Um, one thing's for sure, and I'm good enough to be out here. Um, I'm good enough to compete with these guys and beat most of them. And Ron, we all know a lot of guys on the American side 
decided not to turn professional this summer so they can play in this event. Uh, a lot of guys who are seniors, but there is one guy who's a sophomore who amateur golf may miss more than the rest. Well, of course, you know, then that's Ricky Fowler, uh, who's going to turn pro or probably, you know, probably right now he's <laughs> will, would be. He yeah, he signed, he signed again, right? Green, he signed. Uh, but uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, and you know, and other than Ricky, the other four guys really had no guarantee that they were going to be on his team. I mean, Ricky was pretty much everyone knew would be a lock, uh, but uh, you know, Ricky came out. He went 4-0. He, you know, just was a dominant force all week. He was the rah-rah guy for the team. Uh, there's no question about it. And, and you know, he he ended his amateur career as probably the best way you could possibly do it. Do you think, do you think hold on, do you think you'll actually get a haircut now? <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't know about that. He's I think he a, got one for bit, the event. Bit of a Rory McIlroy, you know, the flowing well, locks. Yeah, you yeah, know? Well, actually, if you just take his hat and you cut around his hat, he'd look you respectable. Got it. Yeah, he, then and maybe, got it. maybe he wouldn't have played so well. Well, that's true too. Should done at the start of the week. Yeah, the old Samson trick. Yeah, exactly. see, yeah, you, you guys, anyway, you guys should have broke into his room and cut with his a hair. pair of scissors. Yep. And now, I I of that. for Ricky Fowler's final words as an amateur. Uh, the two Walker Cups topped anything I've done so far. Um, you know, that's the whole reason I came back and stayed amateur was to play another one. And uh, you know, I told these guys, I, I said, you know, I played in two U.S. Opens, and uh, doesn't match up to the Walker Cup. And finally. I don't want to leave Marion, but we have to. But let's get in one more round of pretend you're your favorite Walker Cup captain in Mr. Colin Daglish. 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 I'm never going to get it right. Colin Daglish, me, got it wrong this week because I stood on the wrong side. I've stood on this side of you all week, and I've lost. This is my better side. Ron stood over there, and he's won. So, you know what I what think? Is, what does I that think, tell you? What does that tell you? I think you? you should come over here. Okay, you come over here, and I'll go over there. Right, and you spin around, and then because I'm on this side, maybe two in two years' time at Royal Aberdeen, we might actually win the cup back. What do you think? Nah, nah, I don't think nah. so. Well, we'll see. Yeah, I think so. I think. What am I saying now nah for? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yes, two years' time, GB and I will win the cup back because I'm standing on this side. Thank you very much. Actually, since Buddy won this event, he gets the uh, final word. <coughs> yeah, come on, huh? You know, I mean, you know. Make it a good one. I, yeah, make it good, buddy. It's the final word. Make the, it fin a good the final one. word. You're about to make a speech at the, I'm, I'm at the, at the, at the, the closing ceremony. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Make it good. Drinks are on the house. Yes. There we go. It's, it's my house. Drinks are on you. you? Know, it's my house, and I'm doing it. Bumba, he's buying a drink. Yes. No, Buddy is. Oh, Buddy's buying a drink. <laughs> buddy's buying a drink. Yes.